Good morning. We're going to talk about Chapter 7 today. Chapter 7 involves three major components. One of them will be, uh, first of all, Chapter 7 is about money, and everybody understands cash no matter what. So we're going to talk about bank reconciliation. We're going to talk about petty cash. And we're going to talk about when a business has actually cash register that's collecting money and how to match it to the cash receipt. So this is about controlling your cash in this chapter. But first, before we start, I want to talk about a very important act that was put into play or put into action in 2002. And this is called the Sarsbane-Osley Act. This was set in motion after Enron, a publicly traded company, went out of business because of its financial mismanagement. So understanding that most publicly traded companies, they sell their stock on the stock exchange. And what they have to do is they have to provide financial information and financial statements such as the balance sheet and the income statement to their stockholders. So Enron was basically telling their customers, or I'm sorry, their stockholders, that they were doing great when in fact they were not doing great. So the information on the financial statements was inaccurate and it allowed the actual CEOs and um, upper management of Stars Bain, I'm sorry, of Enron to cash out their stocks before the company fell. So the, this whole thing is not about Enron. It's really about the Stars Bain Osley Act, which is also known as SOX, S-O-X. SOX basically emphasizes the importance of control over their cash, over providing accurate information, uh, complying to all laws and regulations. So I don't test on this, guys. There's maybe one or two little questions on something. There's not homework on any of this, but I still want to cover it. So here's what happened prior to Enron. We had They had very weak internal controls. It was easy for fraud and theft to happen, but they weren't telling their actual investors and stockholders the truth. When sars uh, uh, Oxley Act came into play, sorry about that, guys, now they're very uh very accurate with keeping track of their internal controls their documentation their reporting all of this stuff has to be done by a third party so now that the act is in place they require companies that are this is only for publicly traded companies not privately held corporations privately held means that you do not sell your stock on the stock exchange so now they require certain certain documentation uh, upon this uh, act from publicly traded companies and they are actually have to file all their paperwork with what we call the Security Exchange Commission or the SEC. Enough about SARS Bain Osley. I just wanted you to bring it to your attention because it's a very important act that happened in 2002. So next we're going to move forward to talking about this whole chapter 7 which is about money or cash. We want you to know that cash could mean multiple things. It means means currencies or money orders or checks. So if you have a retail outlet where you have a cash register, people pay with checks, people pay with paper money or even coins, all of this means cash. And cash is the one asset that's most likely to actually be stolen from your business. So you want to make sure that you protect it. And there's a few ways we're going to talk about that. By the way, bank reconciliation is one of those ways to protect your cash. So we're going to start looking at where, how do I control my cash receipts? So cash receipts is when I actually get money. Okay. And here's the two main sources that I get money from. A customer walk in the door and either buy a product or a service and pay me. So I'm going to get cash. Or an accounts receivable customer will pay me for what they owe me. They'll send me a check. They'll send me a money order. They may even actually come into my store and pay over the counter. Either way, we're going to talk about how to control that cash. If you have a cash register as like a retail outlet, you have to understand what happens. So the customer comes in, does their shopping. This looks like grocery shopping here. They go to the cash register. They pay. Now, in today's world, we most of us pay with our debit cards or our credit cards, but some of us still carry cash. So the retailer takes the cash in through the register, 
And then the paperwork, the cash receipts from the register are sent to the accounting department who does a journal entry into the cash ledger showing how much cash was taken in and crediting sale, debiting cash, crediting sales. And then the cash is counted, put into a vault, and eventually taken to the bank to put into the bank. So this is actually how we use a cash register as an actual control. Sorry about that, I heard my house phone ringing in the background. So we're gonna talk about how I receive cash in from cash sales. So here we have a brand new account. I want you to pay attention to this. It's called cash short and over. And a cash short and over is like an expense account because in reality, you know that people don't always give correct change and people sometimes make mistakes when counting cash back. I walk into a store, I pay for something with a $20 bill. In today's technology, the cash register tells the clerk how much money to give back to me, but sometimes people make mistakes. So I've created like an expense account or a slush account to have um, any shortages or overages into the actual account. So this is called cash short and over. And here's how you know whether you debit or credit. This is a little key. So our T account, well, let me draw a little T account here really quick, guys. So our T account normally looks like this. And here's my debit and here's my credit. But this is gonna be called, oh, sorry about that. This is cash short and over. So here's how you know, if you're short, if you're short, you're gonna put it on the debit side. Sorry, I'm a lousy drawer. If you're over, it's gonna go on the credit side. So when you've got your title up here, remember that debit is short and credit is over. This is how you remember what to do with it. Sorry about the horrible drawing. Art was not my forte. So here is an example. I have a cash register total for sale. So, so actually, I counted the money in the drawer and I had, I'm sorry, I counted the, um, the cash register receipts. That was from the tape from the cash register. It said that I should have had $35,690 cash in the drawer. But when I counted the actual cash that I had, I only had 35668 I should have had this. I only had this. See, I should have had this, but I only had this. So what happens is, here's my journal entry. I got this much cash. I got this much in sales because this was my cash register receipt. So I'm short $22. Remember, cash short will be debit, cash over will be credited. So this, this is really a very simple journal entry. And again, here's how you remember. If it's short, you debit. If it's over, you credit. And this account is like an expense account. So if I'm short, it's an expense. If I'm always over at the end of the period, it's an income. So I'll actually, so if I actually have too much money, I'm always over, that's considered income. I'll put it on an actual statement. So just so you understand, cash short or over, you count the cash. You match it to the cash register receipt tapes. It should be the same. If you do not have enough cash, you are short. If you have too much cash, you are over. Okay, now we're going to look at what happens when I get cash in the mail. Yes, nobody mails cash in the mail. But back in the 60s, we often paid our bill by sending in actual cash. We didn't actually worry about anybody stealing it. It didn't happen then. So we're gonna talk about when customers pay you. They normally will send you a check or a money order or a cashier's check, but they are not going to actually send cash in the mail. That's unheard of in today's. Now, so I can receive cash in the mail. There's different ways I can get cash. So I can also get cash by EFT. In other words, my customer's bank will actually, they'll actually pay me from their bank and put it straight into my bank. And this is really the best way to go because the less you handle checks or money order, the better it is for you as far as controlling your cash. And again, this is why I actually encourage customers to pay me through electronic funds transfers, 
which means you are going to have to give them your banking information. But however, you need to feel confident that no matter what, they cannot touch your money. So getting to talk about cash payments. Cash payments is when I pay people. And for the most part, I'm only paying two types of people in this scenario. I'll be paying payroll, which we are not even talking about in this chapter. And the other people I will pay will be my accounts payable. Okay, so we're going to talk about how I'm actually going to pay somebody. Uh, yes, I could go down to the bank, or the ATM at the bank and take money out. I could be paying, but we're not going to be talking about this in this chapter. I could be paying payroll. We're not talking about this. We're only going to be talking about paying suppliers or what we call accounts payable. So that's just an overview of understanding cash receipts and cash payments. Receipts are when I get money. Payments are when I spend money. And how, we, how important it is to control the cash that you actually have coming in and out your corporation. On the next video, we're going to talk about bank accounts as a major way of controlling your cash.